Hey guys, I'm Satorio Phil. Welcome back to my channel. So this video is a travel guide. It's not my usual product unboxing or product review. And this is also pretty time sensitive. It's about traveling to from the US to France, uh, specifically Paris. You should definitely do your due diligence in researching it as well. I'll also provide some links down below where you can get official information from the US government. The US Embassy in France is another website that provides pretty good up-to-date information. So I kind of have five parts to it. These are my main tips and then I'll talk in more detail about each of these. So I went to Paris the last week of July in 2021. The France had opened up travel to the US back in June. And as of this video, making it on August 24th, US citizens are still allowed to travel to France. But as of August 10th or even the 9th, in terms of the, the US travel advisory, France has been upgraded to a level four, which means do not travel, but you can, you can travel if you still need to, even if it's non-essential. When I traveled, it was a level three, which was reconsider travel. But what's caused the level four primarily is the Delta variant. And there are still, I think, strikes going on. That is a thing that happens pretty regularly in France. So that's also something you want to check for, even without the pandemic. So in order to travel to France from the US, you'll need to show proof of vaccination or get a negative COVID test within 72 hours of your departure. And to prove that you've been fully vaccinated, it has to be at least two weeks after your second dose, or if you have the Johnson & Johnson, it has to be two weeks after that shot in order for you to be considered fully vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated and you're, you decide to take the route of the COVID test, it has to be a documented COVID test. So the at-home rapid testing, those will not be accepted because it's kind of hard to prove that, first of all, it's you who, who took the test and also if you did it correctly or not. So you'll need to go to a clinic or a hospital or some sort of place that either monitors you taking the test or they swab your nose for you and then you'll need to show that document. So in my experience, what happened is when I checked in for my flight to Paris, they checked it, that's where they verified my document and I am vaccinated, so I showed my proof of vaccination card, which is the, the CDC card, I showed it to them at check-in, which is also why they didn't allow automated check-in for my flight. So even though I did have luggage to check-in, but even if you didn't have luggage to check-in, I think you're still going to need to go through the, the ticketing office, which is the check-in gate. So be prepared for that. You know, if you've been watching my videos, I generally keep things pretty objective, but honestly, if you're gonna travel, especially from the US to France to internationally, you really should be vaccinated. You're gonna be potentially putting yourself at risk, but others at risk, especially if you're gonna be on a plane for seven to eight hours. It just makes sense to get vaccinated. Plus the Pfizer vaccination has been FDA, has been fully FDA approved. On the flight, you're also gonna be handed a, a document that you're supposed to sign, basically attesting that you do not have COVID symptoms or you haven't been around someone who has tested positive. And this is something they may or may not check once you land. For me, they didn't check it, so I just kept the paper. And once you land, I didn't have any extra checks besides just going through customs. I wanna have a disclaimer that your experience may vary, especially I've, it's been almost a month since I've gone, so things, have, things may have changed quite a bit, especially with the uptick in cases with the Delta variant. What's new is, as of August 10th, France has also allowed non-European or non-EU visitors to apply for a what's called a French health pass. And this is used for specific activities within France. For example, going to cultural sites, museums, 
even restaurants and bars. So when I went, I, I didn't go to any museums this time. I didn't really even, I didn't even eat in. So I'm not really sure if how stringent they are about this. But if you are planning to go to a museum like the Louvre, you definitely should check out to see how you can apply for the pass. And I'll link the website below as well. So the other part to consider is when you're traveling back to the United States, even if you're fully vaccinated, you still need a negative COVID test in order for entry back into the United States. And this, just like flying to France, for me, this was only checked when I was checking in for my flight, where you would drop your luggage. So again, even if you don't have check-in luggage, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to go through the, the ticketing, like the gate. So that's definitely, again, something you want to plan ahead for. And Charles de Gaulle is a much busier airport than my hometown in Boston. So it was actually a little bit stressful because I thought coming back on Monday, the airport, the airport wouldn't be as busy, but it was still quite busy and they were probably short staffed as well. So the usual recommendation is that you arrive three hours prior to your departure time, especially if you are also going to be doing DTACs. But back to the topic around getting a re-entry back in the US. So this is what I think may cause people some stress. I think again, for in areas where you can't socially distance, if you're wearing a mask, especially a tight fitting mask, you probably won't need to worry too much. And just like on the flight to France or to enter France, you need a documented test result. You'll either need a rapid test, a PCR test, and then maybe others as well, but these are the two most common. And I got a rapid test in Paris and they're pretty readily available in most of the pharmacies. So the Green Cross, you'll see a lot in the streets. There's quite a few pharmacies around the city and a lot of them will do the rapid tests, which they take from, I think, 15 to 25 minutes to get your results back. So it's same day results. I didn't notice any lines for it. So I didn't have a problem getting one. As of right now, a rapid test is still accepted and sufficient in order for re-entry. Again, as long as it's documented, meaning it's not just a take-home test that you do yourself. So for example, if you do it at the pharmacy, that would be accepted and you'll get a printout and that's what you're going to need to show the check-in gate. The printout will have your information on it that you provide to the pharmacy. They'll fill it out and then once they have the test result back, they'll print, you know, whether it's negative or positive. And then there'll be QR codes, which I think they can scan, but in my case, they, they didn't scan. And just like flying there, you need to take the test within 72 hours of departure. And just to reiterate, even if you are fully vaccinated, U.S. citizens returning to the U.S. from a foreign country still need to provide a negative COVID test. And that's one thing that I think may have been confusing to people. So then the last thing, this is more pertinent for people who are planning to do some shopping in Paris. So for DTAX, again, you're going to be facing a check-in line. And if you do DTAX, that can potentially be another long line. And then there'll be the security checkpoint as well, which in my experience of all my times traveling, it usually goes pretty quickly. So for DTAX, I've always gone through the Pablo kiosk, which is the self-serve kiosk, which goes through pretty quickly and usually most people don't have any issues unless you purchase something that I think a single item over 7,000 euro or more may, may f cause an issue and flag it and then you have to show your item to the duty officer. But for some reason when I was flying back, I don't know if I just missed where it was or maybe I wasn't in the in the same terminal but I'm pretty sure I've almost always flown out of terminal 2. I couldn't find the Pablo kiosk but I did find a an officer so all the signs led to this this place for an officer where usually they're going to want to check every single item so it's a lot slower 
So those are the kind of main points. If you have any additional questions, you can let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them. But if you are planning to travel to Paris or you've already made plans, I do recommend that you check the embassy website that I have linked probably daily because it can change pretty quickly if they start changing the requirements for entry or to get back to the United States or even if they temporarily stop allowing foreign visitors. So the US is still listed as a green country. That's why you only need to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within 72 hours in order to enter the country. But again, it's different for when you enter the United States, even as a US citizen and even if you've been fully vaccinated. If you do plan to travel, make sure you do your due diligence and that you stay safe. So good luck, thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.